Hi, hi, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. How are you? Super happy to be here. Um, yeah, today, you know, yesterday is the was the four year anniversary of opening my business. And um, <clears throat> I still remember that little moment, big moment um, when I did that, because I, I did a few things for me. Uh, the official opening of my business was to go online and um, apply for a business license. And then I also went in and clicked publish on my Facebook business page and my um, website that I had been working on prior to that. So that was for me the way that I sort of set it up. Uh, I'm just going to update this so that I can see you guys. If you're live, please say hi. I want to know that you're here. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and jump into it today. Today I'm talking about, um, as I'm getting up my ability to see you guys, uh, today I'm talking about the top four things I've learned in the last four years in business. So I thought to, that would be a good Topic for today, since we have the, hi, Casey, hi, Casey, hi, Casey, since we have the um, anniversary this week. Casey is new to my team. Welcome, Casey. So happy to have you here. Um, we'll be continuing to get her up to speed on everything. But uh, for those of you who are familiar with my team, I have added a second person to my team, which now make us a, makes us a team of three. Casey is my new VA and she's so amazing and I'm so happy to have her here. You may or may not be communicating with her from time to time. So um, welcome. All right. So what I'm going to talk about today is, again, the top four things that I've learned from the last four years in business. Please, please ask any questions if you're live, if you're on the replay, um, ask me questions and um, tag me in your comments especially if you're on the replay, um, tag me in your comments and I'll be sure to come back in. I always come back in and check the comments and uh, reply to those. So I would love, love, love to hear from you, especially if you have questions as we go along, okay? So the top four things I've learned in business, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the idea of investing. And when I started my business, I had no money. <laughs> I had no money. I was in debt. Um, and I really hated it when people said like, oh, you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your business, blah, blah, blah. So the old me is cringing right now, but she knows that I'm right. Um, and that's actually what I've done. Um, I have invested in my business over the years. And I, I think it's important to say, um, I always try to speak to people at whatever level of business you're in. So this is not the top four lessons I've learned from growing and scaling my business. It will hit that point, but it's also the top four lessons I've learned in business. I've learned about running your own heart centered business over the last four years. As I've coached other entrepreneurs, I get to get an inside view to a lot of different people's businesses. And then prior to starting this business four years ago, I spent 18 years in the corporate world and I not only had a lot of different jobs, um, employment wise, several different employers, but I did a lot of consulting in those jobs. So even though I might've had the same employer for five years, I was on site consulting to lots of different companies during those four years. And so I know a lot about what works and what doesn't work, what feels right and what doesn't feel right in a business. And um, what I, again, am gonna speak to today is hopefully going to support you at whatever level you are at in business. And, and my clients range from brand new, trying to build a foundation all the way to people who are making way more money than me and trying to simply have more fun, have more fulfillment, have more peace and more ease in their business um, where we're not working on necessarily growing or scaling a business. So again, today's conversation is really about no matter where you are in business, these topics apply or these four things apply to you. So wherever you are, take a minute and see where, the, where this affects you. So investing is number one. I don't care where you are in your business process, when you're starting and or when you are sustaining or just trying to uh, find more enjoyment in something that you've already built and scaled. Investing is always going to be 
helpful. Um, investing in time and investing in money. Okay. So if you're growing an, a foundation and you're and or you're trying to scale from that foundation, um, oftentimes it comes into investing your time. Right. I create. I did my own website. Um, some people pay other people to invest in your website. It doesn't matter. But oftentimes, those of you who are starting a business from the ground up, solopreneur, you're investing a lot more time than you are money. And then you might start to shift that, right? In fact, I recommend that you shift that over time. But you also ideally would invest money as well. What I have found over the years from a growing and scaling perspective um, is that I was able to grow and scale quicker and with more confidence um, when I hired a coach or hired an expert or hired a team member. So investing oftentimes is investing in having a team to support you, even if that is just one person. Uh, investing is investing in a coach to support you, even if that's uh, just whatever you can, you know, um, afford, right? Even I think masterminds can be helpful. I think it's really important when you're investing to make sure that you know what it is specifically that you're attempting to get out of hiring this expert or hiring this team member and making sure that you're really clear, right? That this expert or team member can give you what you specifically are looking for. For example, um, I am not a how-to coach, right? I don't I don't teach you how to uh, set up a website, for example, or how to go onto Facebook and create a Facebook business page or how to set up a funnel or a Facebook ad, right? Like I might support my clients in making choices about those things being their strategy, but I'm not going to, you know, go in and click around and share my screen and show you or teach you how to tactically set that up, right? If that's what you're looking for, you shouldn't hire me. You should hire a more of a how-to training person, right? And those people oftentimes call themselves coaches as well. So being really clear about what you need in that moment from an expert, a coach, a team member, a training class, et cetera. Investing always, always moves your needle forward. You could invest in the wrong person. And I've had coaches that in hindsight, I was like, oh, I really shouldn't have hired them at that point in my business. It would have made more sense to hire them at a different point in time. I still got something out of it. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with um, making those decisions and you're going to learn from those decisions. This is a constant learning process. Entrepreneurship is a constant learning process. So get used to it, <laughs> learn to embrace it. I'm just going to turn my fan on here. Um, so get used to it, learn to embrace that, that part of it, because it is a learning process, just like life. And if you, uh, think that you have to just figure out one thing and then after that, it'll be all cake. You're in for a very rude awakening. Um, and again, I just also, for those of you who are new to me, I want to clarify when I speak about entrepreneurship and when I speak about running a business for the purposes of the audience that I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to people who are running heart-centered businesses, businesses that feel purpose-driven or mission-driven. Um, nine times out of 10, those are people's businesses that they have created on their own. Those are the typically the people that I work with. So um, if you are creating a business for the purpose of making money and you're not um, tuned into the work that you do, it's not coming from your heart and your soul and you don't feel like, the work that you put out into the world is your life's purpose, then that's fine. But I'm not exactly speaking to you today. I'm speaking to people who are putting their heart and soul, their purpose, their talents and gifts out into the world and taking a chance that they can also make money doing that, which by the way, you can. Okay. So if you're a heart centered entrepreneur, the work is never done from a mindset perspective. That's why that's one of my top things that I help my clients with is mindset. There's always something else to learn. Entrepreneurship, I don't care if you're doing your 17th launch, there's always something to learn, not just from the tactical, practical space of how to launch a program or a, or a product, but um, you're always going to learn about yourself as a business owner, about entrepreneurship in general, about how you want to be, um, who you want to work with, uh, the way that you want to do it now, right? Because we're always growing and changing. So again, Investing, investing, investing. If this is making sense, let me know. I'm just going to double check to see if we have comments here. 
Hi, Michelle. Welcome. 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 And Casey says, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. Welcome to my team, my dear. Okay. So investing again can be in team, in an expert, um, someone who can execute something that you don't know how to do. Highly recommend that depending on what your business is and what you're doing, investing in a coach. I'm always going to support investing in a coach. I have my own business coach. Um, and I have my own personal um, life coach, right? So um, getting the support that you need as a business owner, that's always worth the investment. And the cool thing is it's a business expense, right? Um, hiring expert. And, and the other thing I want to add here in this investment category is having a side gig. And I know that's going to sound a little bit counterintuitive, but again, for those people, this is specifically for those people who are um, growing and scaling their business. Once you've grown and scaled to a point that feels comfortable to you from a, like a baseline perspective, of course, you can always grow and make more money. You can always scale and expand. Um, but for those of you who are still trying to build a foundation, I'm a big fan of a side gig. It pulls the pressure off of your business and off of you as a business owner to make money to support your living expenses while you're building your foundation. Now, if you have another source of income, to me, that's a side gig, right? So an income, having an income and knowing that your bills are paid and that your basic needs are met, it's really important when you're trying to grow a business. I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up. And a lot of people get into a mindset spin. And that's where a lot of people either fail, close their businesses, quit, or just have a slower progression of success, um, with, of getting where they want to go. Not everyone, right? I, I, do, I, I know many people who went all in and made it work, okay? It's very stressful, though. And I don't believe that pressure actually works from a motivation perspective. Um, that's for a whole nother day. But I personally don't believe that. So. Again, if you're in the growing and building phase, having a side gig, I think, is an investment in your business. It might seem counterintuitive, but it's an investment in allowing yourself to release the pressure to receive the money that you need to pay your basic needs. That, in, in turn, gives you the opportunity to invest time and energy into your business with a clearer head and with um, less pressure. It's just, I, I, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's really, really complicated and it's not for everyone. Um, and it's a controversial topic. And I've spoken about it once or twice already. I have a whole live on, should you have a side gig? Um, I think I did it in the spring. Um, but I think it is worthy of consideration if you're in the building phase because being, and then taking that money that once you have it set with your needs, investing that money in the other options, like a coach, uh, a training class, if you need some training around your actual, um, service or product, uh, a team member, an expert, et cetera always reinvesting money back into your business. I don't care what phase of business you're in. It's always, always, always going to support you. Okay. Let me know if this says, if you have any questions. Hi, Allison. Welcome. Okay. So top four things I've learned in business. Number one, invest, invest in yourself, get a coach, invest in your business, get a team. And not all of these have to be done at once, right? Actually, I don't think you should do them all at once. Invest in experts when you need to. Invest in giving yourself a side gig so that you can reinvest back into your business. Investment is key. Um, what is it? Amazon uh, spent the first, I think it was like 10 plus years without making a profit because everything they made, they reinvested back into the business, reinvested back into research, reinvested back into the business. Obviously it made a difference. Um, there's some um, other ways that, that Amazon runs their business that I don't love, but that piece is, it's true. It's in all of your simple, basic business practices. It's in all the business books. It's the textbook. And I, I don't always align to textbook running business um, advice, but I do here. Okay. So always, always, always an investment is always a good idea. And all of that is to say that assumes that you are making a good decision about that particular investment. So 
it is important to be clear if you want all of these things that I'm talking about, right? If you'd love to have a team, if you'd love to have an expert, if you'd love to have a coach, blah, 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 and you don't have the money for them all yet, be clear and intentional about what you choose first, second, and third. Okay, that's the other piece is investment, but investment with really clear intentions. Really clear intentions. Okay. Please let me know if this makes any sense. Um, because I think it's funny, I was, uh, I was at a, uh, I took a free, a free class that someone offered yesterday, who I love, Yulin is in this group. She offered a free masterclass the other day on investing. And one of the points that she made was that while real estate is a great investment, it's only a great investment for the people that, is, that it's a great investment for. And that means you have to know yourself. In this case, you have to know your business and yourself. Um, if you want to invest in real estate, for example, you really need to understand your risk profile and which type of real estate even would make sense for you. Should you buy a house and live in it and invest in it over time, right? Or should you buy a rental property and can you make the numbers work such that you have some sort of income coming in? Because not everybody has, I have had a rental property before where it wasn't, it was basically breaking even. So I wasn't making money every month on that. So if I had invested in that for the purpose of bringing in money every month, which I hadn't, but that wasn't my intention, right? But if that was my intention and it didn't come in because the numbers didn't add up, then that would have been the wrong investment for me. So just because someone says Facebook ads are the best, or you have to have a coach, or you have to have a team or blah, 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 that doesn't mean they're wrong. But there, there is, um, I think, a very, there's a large, I place a lot of importance around the idea of discernment and clear intentions when you're running your business, because you can't always, most people can't always do all things at once. Right. So picking and choosing what makes the most sense for you at this phase in your business and what you can get out of that. And perhaps investment number one might help you invest in investment number two. Right. I hired a business coach that helped me invest in a team member. OK, so it's not always all of the above at once. And I think that the um, the importance here is my point investing. Um, this is not just for those of you who are just joining, this is not just based on me over the last four years, but this is also based on all the businesses that I've had the privilege of, of being a part of or peeking into because of all the clients that I've worked with, both in this business and in my former um, consulting career. Okay, investing is always a good idea. And one of the things that I always noticed from a perspective of when with my corporate clients back in the day was when a company was afraid to invest money in a project or something, it typically indicated something else behind the scenes in terms of the way that they ran their business. Um, if you're not willing to, in, if you're a big company, I found a lot of times people didn't want to invest in their people and the development and growth of their people. What does that say about that company, right? Because at the end of the day, those big companies run on the people. Okay, so getting really clear and intentional about what are your goals, what are your intentions will make it easier. And spoiler alert, number four is about simplify, right? So if you can stay simple with going back to basics, going back to why you're in business, going back to what you're trying to achieve, that will help you to make the right decisions around investments. Okay, let me know if you have investment, um, investment questions. I'm gonna move on to the second part of the conversation. Um, but please ask me questions as we go. There is a fly, a gnat in here. Um, number two, if you've been in my space for any period of time, you've heard me say it all the time and I won't stop. Be you, run your business on your own terms. There are several different layers that I want to talk about today, but again, this is nothing new um, if you've been in my space. Um, but I have found this is a lesson I've learned over and over and over and over and over again in the last four years. Um, first off, one of the things just personally that I had to grapple with after 18 years in corporate, I was um, really intellectually challenged by my job. I liked my job from an intellectual standpoint. I really liked the people and the teams that I worked with. Um, but the meaning and the fulfillment piece, I felt like my soul didn't get to grow uh, at work. I had to do that on evenings and weekends, right? Um, and ultimately that just wasn't sustainable for me. I knew I was meant to do something else, okay? Um, 
But one of the things I had to grapple with four years ago yesterday uh, when I opened this business was, do I, can I really earn money doing that, what I love? I'm in my 40s. I've always been single. I've never been married. I do not have a trust fund. I have always been responsible for supporting myself financially. I thought that maybe the only way to do that was to be in corporate or to have a corporate um, job where I knew I was secure from a financial income standpoint. Um, and I had to get over that. I had to work really hard on my mindset to explore the concept of, could I do work that I loved? Could I do something that I find more meaningful than my first career? And could I, uh, can, and can it sustain me? Can I financially support myself? The answer is yes. Okay. I had to get over one layer of that just to even start my business. And I know I'm not the only one. Most of us had to get over something like that in order to even start this business. And it's something that I have to keep reminding myself of, keep learning at different levels. That's part of my um, evolution as a soul and as a business person as a, and as a practitioner is that I can do things the way that I want and still make money. I can be successful at work that I love. I can make money at work that I love. All of these things, right? Where is your limited, uh, limiting belief kicking in when, as I'm speaking? Um, so number one, you can be you at work, right? I didn't feel like I could be me in my corporate job. Exactly. Only with certain people, right? Only in certain examples. And you can run your business on your own terms. So number one is, let me just tell you that it is true. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but I think um, that's the first thing to say. And here comes my beautiful cat to support what we're saying here. I just want to see uh, Michelle's comment. Michelle says, I've always been responsible for supporting myself financially, never married and raised my daughter on my own. It has been a very challenging journey for me. I left a six figure salary, same to follow my heart. I love the work. I love the freedom and I have worked hard on my mindset. I feel you girl. I feel you. Same. Same, same, right? And I think there's a lot of people in this boat, in this group. Um, that's why I started this group. So my cat is eating my cord. Um, I think he's saying hi to Allison. So number one, not only can you do it, but you can do it your way. And that's, if, if you've worked with me, if you've been in my space, that I will never stop beating this dead horse. I will never stop repeating this record you know, broken record phrase, because it's important for me to hear it. And it's the number one value that I use to approach my, co my coaching with my clients, because oftentimes we all want to run a business the way that somebody else tells us that we have to do it. And there are lots of different ways to do it. And, and I'm not doing it really all that differently than the way other people do it. But I, I pick and choose my way of doing different things so that it fits me as a person and my business and what I offer. Um, so if you're going to be you and you're going to run your business on your own terms, a couple of different points around that. First off, as I just said, you can, it's possible. Okay. Number two, um, for those of you who are building, this is a really, I wish I, this is a really important point. If you're in the building phase, the way that you build something is also the way that you sustain something. So for example, if you say, I'm going to use this particular marketing strategy till I make the money I want, and then I'm going to do it the way I really want to. Okay. In general, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. And none of us are here to judge this whole thing as a learning process. But if I build it in a way that I don't want, then I have to sustain it in a way that I don't want. It's a lot easier to build it the way that it works for you first, and then it's sustainable. So if you're in a building phase and you're struggling and you think that only one way of marketing your business is the only way, um, and the example I like to use is like Facebook ads and funnels. Facebook ads and funnels are amazing, and they require a lot of time and effort and technological skill to set up. So either you have to pay somebody to do it or you have to learn, some, learn how to do it, right? Some people are never are not technical people. They're, that's never going to be the right approach for them. They would be better to grow and scale their business using a different approach. And then if they want to add funnels or um, um, Facebook ads later, hire an expert when they have the money to and use that as an opportunity to scale. 
okay? But this is about knowing, so, but choosing those two options, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not for everybody. So you don't have to go that path if it doesn't feel right to you, if it doesn't feel sustainable to you, if it's not that, if that's not a way that you want to keep, keep running your business, then go a different way. There's a million different other ways to market your services and your products. So the way that you build it is the way that you sustain it. And that's one of the things that I am helping some of my thriving clients do, right? So for those that are building, I'm trying to help them build in a way that's sustainable for them, build in a way that works for them, right? You can run your business on your own damn terms is what I always say. And for those of my clients who already have a, a business built and scaled, uh, most of them come to me because it's not sustainable for them or because they've evolved past the old way of doing things and they want to do it differently, right? So a lot of times my clients that are that that have the money coming in that they want and need, whether of course everybody wants to make more, right? But they have a base level and they don't have to worry about the money at that level. Oftentimes we are, excuse me, the energy is whew, the energy is flowing, you guys. Oftentimes what we're doing is we're simplifying and we're carving out the things that got overcomplicated or ways that they were running their business in the way that they thought they had to and didn't know that they could run it the way they wanted to. And so now we're kind of going backwards and going, okay, well, let's pull this out. Let's do this part differently. How can we execute this differently in a way that feels good to you? So again, you can run your business on your own terms. You get to be you and your work at all levels. And the way that you build it is the way that you sustain it. So I personally believe that if I use my old corporate career as a, an example, there was, I was doing work that I love for the most part, but the way that I built that career was not sustainable for me. It was not enough of my own way and my own terms. And the circumstances surrounding the work that I did ended up being the thing that burned me out and had to, and pushed me out. And it was the right thing, right? But I, it wasn't a sustainable career for me. So I've been determined and I've seen, I've been within my business and my client's business to build something that's sustainable for me, for me, the way that I do it is not going to work for everybody. If you are you, if you are you at all levels, if you put you into your marketing, Hey, guess what? We all know. If you can put more of you into your marketing, not your polished, perfect version of you, but your real you. And this isn't to say that you have to go to the other extreme and like put all your deepest, darkest secrets and all the tragedies that you've experienced in your life, in your marketing. You can, and you don't have to. Like finding your balance of those things, putting you into your marketing. Everybody knows this, right? Energetically, it attracts the right clients to you. So the more you can put you in your marketing, the more you'll be successful. And this is, can you see how I'm talking about being you doing it on your own terms. There's so many layers and levels to this. Um, be you with your team. Be you with your coach. Do it on your own terms. Don't do what your team tells you to do. Do what you feel is right. Guide your team. Your team can support you, right? Or your team can say, but ground your team into who you are and what you do so that they can then say, hey, I feel like this is more you than this, right? That's one of the things I love about Amy who works with me. My, oh gosh, I just shook my table, shook my table. Um, Amy is my creative director and she's really good at like identifying things that feel like me, okay? So finding ways to insert you at all levels of your business. And one of the other things that I love about it is this whole be you thing. When I was thinking about my top four, obviously these are just the top four, right? I have more than four things that I've learned in the last four years that I want to share. But one of the things I wanted to call this one of these sections was I wanted to say showing up was one of the top four, but then I decided showing up for me, showing up is part of being me at all levels and running my business on my own damn terms because showing up is easy when you run your business your own way. It's it was really hard for me to show up in corporate at the end the last 4 or 5 years of my career. It was really hard for me to show up and do my best work when I wasn't doing it the way that made helped me thrive. Right? If you're running your business in a way that helps you personally thrive, and this can be at any level, right? The way that you interact with your team, the way that you go to your marketing, the way that you organize your calendar, the way that you decide what you do and don't do, all of those things are doing it on your own terms with really, really clear intentions. 
But let me use these, these Wednesday Facebook Lives as an example. If I didn't like these lives and I forced myself to do them every week, can you imagine how many people would ever show up? I don't know that that many of you would, right? I have spinach in my teeth. Um, so if you do something, but I love these. I love these lives. I love talking to my community and hearing back from you. And I'm gonna read these comments here in a second, speaking of. But for me, this is, it's really easy. I am not a disciplined person. I do have a regular scheduled routine, but I have to keep my schedule really flexible for myself. So I block off big sections of time. Um, if I, for some people do better, for example, like blocking off every hour, doing something different or setting aside every hour and determining what every hour is going to be for, that doesn't work for me. So the way that I organize my schedule works for me and how I thrive as a person. Same for this way that I'm marketing myself. Doing these lives every single week is really easy for me. I get excited every Wednesday when I'm like, what am I doing today? Oh yeah, I'm going live, right? I get excited about it. It's so easy for me to show up. It's easy. I talked about showing up consistently last week in my life. It's easy for me to show up consistently here on Wednesdays because I love it. I, I can't stop coming up with ideas of live topics. If you can be easily motivated by the tasks that you give yourself, you will accomplish them much more easily. You will enjoy your work much more easily. So finding a way. <clears throat> to run your business on your own terms at all levels, right? So for example, let's say uh, maybe, maybe I love delivering these, but I have a hard time coming up with ideas. Maybe I would ask my team to help me come up with ideas so that I can get that thing that doesn't work for me off my plate. And then once they give me a couple of topics, oh yeah, I know what I wanna talk about, great. Then I'll go deliver, right? As an example, run your own business on your own damn terms and be you while you're doing it. Okay, that's number two. We are right at the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to just take these questions and then we'll move on to the second two. The first one is investing. The second one is being you and running your business on your own terms. Okay. Michelle says, I'm shifting my focus right now and creating online programs while I'm staying steady with clients. I love it. I love it. Congrats, my dear. <clears throat> okay. So. Number three is develop a deeper level of trust with yourself. I think personally, this is something that most of us are going to be working on for our entire lives at some level, um, particularly as a business owner, learning to trust yourself, uh, I think saves you time saves you energy, saves you headaches and misery, um, saves you arguments uh, with team, with client, with whoever is supporting you, if you can trust yourself. And that's not to say that you're always right and be rigid around that and don't listen to anybody else's ideas, right? I'm not at all suggesting something to that extreme. But most of my clients come to me in part because they're working on trusting themselves to make good business decisions. Um, and I'll give you, I mean, I, I'm always, I'm all about self-trust. I've done millions of hours of personal work around self-trust and I've gone, come so far. And of course I'm still working on this too. One of the things that I love to have a business coach for is to say, I've made this decision and I wanna talk it through with you because that will help me think it through clearly or I have somebody to bounce ideas off of and help me gain a deeper level of trust within myself. And of course, if she has an idea to add to it, great, bonus. But being able to trust yourself in the role of CEO, in the role as a business owner, I think for most people is really, really hard. So first off, validation, if you're having trouble with that. Secondly, there are lots of ways that not trusting yourself, yourself can show up in your business. And I want to encourage you to notice those things so that you can go, oh, okay. On the one hand, I can see how this is playing out. On the other hand, if I think about what's underneath, it's probably that I don't trust myself. Um, so if you, if you decide something and then you change your mind really fast about it, 
you're not trusting yourself to make that decision. I know a lot of my clients will make a decision. They'll make it from a clear headed space. They'll make it, they'll start to execute it. And within a few weeks of executing that decision, something happens that brings them back into contraction, right? Because when we expand and contract, right? There's this, it's a little scary to expand. When we, oftentimes within the first few weeks of making a new big decision, they will contract in some way. We all do this. We'll contract in some way and doubt ourselves. Maybe I made the wrong decision. This feels uncomfortable, right? Same, same with making a new strategy decision. Maybe you change your prices or you change your strategy, your marketing strategy, right? Let's say you decide to use add TikTok to your marketing strategy. And if in the first few weeks of using it, you don't have very many followers, you're like, well, that was a shitty idea. I'm going to scrap the whole thing and start over. It's not necessarily true, right? A whole nother conversation on give yourself plenty of time to execute a marketing strategy before you decide if it's working or not. Um, but that's what we do, right? As we expand, we make a big decision and then we're like, oh, I think I made the wrong one. I don't trust myself, right? Um, what I encourage my clients to do is number one, make a decision that you feel that you can commit to for some period of time to see that it works. And then you can adjust if it doesn't work perfectly the first time. Um, but give yourself that time and space to commit to that decision. Trust yourself to make a decision that you can commit to. And then find, once you commit and execute on a decision, find a balance between staying with that commitment and trusting yourself and trusting yourself to know when you need to make a tweak. And I always say tweak because usually the answer isn't decide X and then up, oh, it doesn't work and decide Y. Usually that's not the best way. Usually you decide X, you commit and you stay committed to it, you execute. And as you go after a certain amount of time, depending on what you're executing, after a certain amount of time, you evaluate it and you tweak as needed. Trust yourself that you can balance that making a decision and sticking to it and trusting the future you to make the right decision in the future when that dis first decision needs to be 2.0, right? The next version of that decision or that decision minus one thing or that decision plus one other little thing or to change a slight course down the road. Trust yourself. And if you don't trust yourself, that's a great thing to get some support with, depending on what you're doing, right? That's what I love to help my clients with. Get a coach, get a business coach, get a life coach. Um, if you're working on something specific, maybe hire an expert. If you're not trusting yourself to put your brand together, if you're not trusting yourself to put your website together, for example, then maybe hire an expert in those areas, depending. Um, I'm just checking my notes here. And the other thing around trusting yourself and making good business decisions is so often we get thrown off and confused and scared by the fact that we don't know enough about the future. And we think we don't know enough about the future in order to make a decision right now. While I will say there are sometimes that is true. Sometimes that is true. Um, um, do I have an example? Yes. I, um, let me think if that's a good one. I have changed my schedule so that I can accommodate more one-on-one -on -one clients. So now I'm in a space where I have the ability to bring on a few more, by the way, if you want some coaching, let me know. I have an opportunity to bring on a few more clients at a time than I, know, than I used to. So I'm playing around and I made this decision. I'm committing to this decision. I feel good about it. I've gone, I've covered all my bases. I didn't overthink it, but I really felt into it. And I think that I'm ready to also because I've hired teammates to help me. Okay. So there's a lot of practical pieces behind this decision. Um, and I've really worked with my own calendar and schedule to see how I can do this to in a way that feels good for me, okay? 
So if I'm adding, I think it's three new clients in addition to the clients that I already consider to be full, um, I've made that decision, right? Knowing what I know now, this is the right thing for me. And I'm going to experiment. I'm not going to take on too many at a time because what if I'm wrong? Um, or what if something changes in my business? But I'm going to make this step to gradually increase my client load in a way that feels good to me. So I want to bring on new people. Okay. And I also have this beautiful group coaching program that a lot of you have been a part of, Evolve. I love Evolve. So far, I've been running it about once a year. I don't know yet when I'm going to run it again. I don't know for sure even if I'm going to run it in 2022. I haven't made that decision yet. I want to see how it feels to add these additional clients and to see how my workload feels and see how my team evolves over time. And then I will make a decision probably closer to the end of the year around what I want to do with Evolve and when I want to run it again, right? For me to be able to make this one decision around my one-on-ones has nothing to do with me saying, I don't know enough to know about Evolve, right? So one is around decision-making, know what you need to decide now and what you can wait and decide later. I've decided actually that I'm going to decide about Evolve later. Does that make sense? I get to decide that later based on how it feels for me to do this. But for me to have to say to myself, I need to know if I'm going to run Evolve again. And if so, well, I'll probably run it. I need to know exactly when I'm going to run Evolve because I then can't make my plans for 2022. That's bullshit. I can make my plans for 2022 based on what I know now, based on what I know now. I don't have to know everything about 2022 right now in order to plan out what I already know needs to go there. I'm going to give you another example. Um, clients who want to create a program, you don't have to know every single tiny detail of the program and you don't have to have created the entire program from start to finish, complete with, you know, beautiful delivery of your, um, I'm going to, sorry, an online course complete with, you know, your perfectly delivered, uh, vi recorded videos with your graphics and your blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do all of that and know all of that before you start to move forward and market for it and talk to clients and start to talk to them about coming in, right? You don't have to decide everything about that in order to move forward. And so often my clients come to me and say, ah, well, I don't know what to do about this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And the truth is there's so much you do know, and there's so much that you know now, and you get to make decisions based on what you know now, which is oftentimes just decision for phase one, right? You know, there will be a phase two, phase three, and phase four, but you don't have to know all the details of the next phases in order to get started, in order to make decisions for phase one. Let me know how that's resonating, right? It doesn't all have to be done and known in order to move forward. And this is one of those places where the mind loves to self-sabotage you. Uh, if you don't know steps one through 10, you can't even start on step one. That's what your brain wants to tell you. That's the self-sabotage. That's where the brain likes to complicate things. Not true. Bullshit brain, bullshit. I can do, I know some stuff. And I can do those things now. And, and most of the time, you guys, the actual truth of how to get things done is you execute on phase one. And as you execute on phase one, the how to do phase two becomes clear. I'm going to say that again. When you move forward and execute on phase one, the process of executing helps you get clear on what your phase two is. I'm going to give you a really another, another really good example. Um, let's say you're trying to decide on who your target audience is, your ideal client, who it is that you want to serve. So many people spend so much time worrying about that because they know a little, but they don't know a lot before they ever even start seeing clients. I am here to tell you, I spent my first year seeing pretty much everyone. I'm not saying this is the best idea, but I saw everyone who wanted to see, I started my business, I was a hypnotherapist. I didn't specifically 
uh, do business coaching until a little bit later. I saw everyone. That didn't help me narrow down my niche. It didn't help me find my audience. However, throughout that year, I started to slowly narrow it down. About every two months, <laughs> I would start to narrow down. And because I was seeing clients, I learned what I liked. I learned who I served best. I learned who I liked to serve best. I learned what I wanted to work with them on. And I also noticed that all the people that were coming to me were entrepreneurs anyway. And I liked that. And so I decided I wanted to help entrepreneurs. And then eventually I started doing the business piece of it as well as the mindset piece. Um, but I could never have gotten to this point if I go back exactly four years ago yesterday when I started this business. If I were to say to myself, you're now a business coach for entrepreneurs and creatives and you've owned your uh, intuitive side and you tell people you're an intuitive now and they pay you for it. You're an intuitive business coach. I never, I would have been like, what? Dude, I'm a hypnotherapist. I'm a mental health professional, right? One, your business is going to evolve over time. I talk about that a lot. Two, I had to trust myself to make the right decision along the way. Three, you're not intent. I was, I didn't need, I wouldn't, I was never ready to help the clients that I'm helping now four years ago. So it would have done me a disservice to say, this is the answer, right? If I could talk to my four year ago self to tell her, this is the answer, this is your audience. It wouldn't have helped me because I was so still burned out from corporate. I didn't wanna help people with their business. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that skill in. I was not ready to own my intuitive side. I only wanted to help people with mindset. And as I went through and did the work phase one, by seeing clients, I evolved to phase two. And then I knew more about phase two. Part of knowing more is just you learn in the doing. You learn in the doing. And I want to go back to the investment piece because I there was one really important point I wanted to make. Number one, top four things I've learned, and these are in no particular order, but number one was investing. Not just investing in your business, but doing it before you think you're ready. doing it before you think you're ready, bringing on a team member before you get behind, investing in someone to coach you before you fall apart, <laughs> before you burn out, right? Investing before you think you're ready, investing when maybe you have enough to pay them half and you're going to figure out the rest of the way, right? Whatever it is, whatever your version of a little bit before you're ready, oftentimes that's the right time. And I have a post going out this week or next week around like, when you think you're ready, when you feel ready, it's usually, by the way, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, too late anyway. <laughs> and this isn't to say push yourself into things that you don't want to do, but the truth is trust yourself to make a decision, number three, that's best for you and your business and continue to allow yourself, give yourself the time and space and energy and money to invest back in your business. And you may or may not feel ready, may or may not feel ready but usually just before you feel ready, you're actually ready. <laughs> okay, um, number four. Number four, I've started, I, all of these overlap, right? So let me just quickly uh, review. Number one is investing in your business. Number two, run it on your own damn terms and be you in the process. Number three, trust yourself. Learn to make good decisions. Get help making good decisions. That will serve you time. And again, my Evolve program, that's one of the big things that it teaches you is how to make good decisions for you, how to tap into your intuition, your inner knowing, and make the right decision for you. I believe that the answers are inside us anyway, right? So one of the things that I do when I coach my clients is I don't tell them what to do. I help them figure out the best way for them, right? We find a way for them. The answers are within them. Um, and so number four is keeping it simple. As I said earlier, one of the little tricks that your mind will play on you is it will tell you that you can't do something until this is done, right? Go research self-sabotage. It's very rational. The saboteur is very rational and it's going to say, well, Laura, to do this properly, you need to do one through five and then you can execute. That's step six. It's not exactly true. And it's also not the most efficient way to do it, right? 
So finding the opportunity to keep it simple and to say, I, thank you, Brian, for trying to overcomplicate this, but I can actually go see clients right now by putting a, let me just go back to four years ago. I had a very simple, I highly recommend brand new clients if you are brand new business owners. If you need a website, great, do a one pager. Who I am, who I serve, how to reach me. Now you have an online presence, you have legitimacy, and you do not need to spend nine years putting a detailed, complicated website together in order to start serving your clients, selling your product, whatever it is. Then get moving on getting a nicer, more professional website when you have the time and energy, okay? Um, so keep it simple. Most of the time you can act now, no matter where you are in your business. Keeping it simple is best. Um, so number one, if you're building a business, for me, my best advice about keeping it simple is just do one thing at a time. Don't try to go out to 18 different markets at the same time. Don't try to build a funnel and uh, do Facebook ads and do reels on Instagram and open up TikTok and figure out what the hell's going on on Campfire, uh, not Campfire, what's it called? Um, oh my God, I can't think of the big app that came out this year. Now I want to call it base camp or campfire. I'm on it. Clubhouse, clubhouse, clubhouse. Okay. So, and then I, now I got to figure out what clubhouse is because I have to be present in all these places. No, simplify, build one audience and then add to it. Create one program and then create another one later. Decide if it's group, if it's course, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is. If you're a service provider, if you're selling products, decide how you're going to simplify what you're creating and what you're selling so that you don't have to create a hundred pieces of jewelry, for example, in order to sell your first 10. If you're sustaining your business, if you're not in the building and scaling phase, but you're sustaining, for me, simplifying is all about what can we get off your plate so that you can focus on bringing in new clients and serving your existing clients. If you are a, an artist, what can we get off your plate so that you can focus on creating more art? Um, if you're in the sustainable phase and you're trying to make your business work more for you and you're not in the building scaling phase, oftentimes it's sort of like, great, let's do some spring cleaning. What in your business has gotten messy and how can we clean it up? Nine times out of 10, the answer is how can we simplify? What's gotten overcomplicated? These things help you up level. These things help you up level. One of my favorite things to do, and it sounds so simple and boring, and it is one of the most impactful things business owners do on a regular basis, on, in my space anyway, when I work with my clients, is they change their schedule. They tweak or totally overhaul their schedule because their schedule at one point in time does not reflect their business priorities or their goals or their mission. Right? If they're spending their entire time running their business and they only have a few hours a week to see clients, they're not achieving their mission. Right? Your calendar should reflect your mission and your goals. More of your time should be spent on your mission and your goals versus your second, third, fourth, and fifth priorities. So that's why I always tell people have one priority, have, have two priorities and then align everything up to that. Line your marketing up to that one or two priorities. Line your investments up to that one or two priority. Line your calendar up to that one or two priority. Take your marketing and line it up to that one or two, two priorities. Simple is better. We are sold online so many myths about how complicated running an online business needs to be. And it's simply not true. And I find that the more complicated people make allow their businesses to be particularly in the marketing and strategy area areas um, those are the people that are calling me telling me they're about to burn out and for me my mission and let me just say one other thing and this is going to get back to my mission sometimes the easiest way to simplify something is to go back to grounding yourself in your mission and your vision what did you set out to do when you started this business is this thing that's in front of you going to help you do that? Yes or no? And if yes, and it still feels complicated, how can you simplify it to get it closer to the grassroots of what you're trying to do? 
So what I've learned in four years in business is invest in your business. I've learned a lot more than these four, but these are my favorite four. Invest in your business. Be you and run your business on your own damn terms. Um, learn how to make good decisions. Learn how to be a better decision maker and keep it simple. And my vision and my mission is to help people who run their own businesses, who run heart-centered businesses, stay focused on their mission. My vision and my mission is to help you not go burnout like I did in corporate, to help you not feel stressed out and overworked and um, like you have to run your business in a way that somebody else told you you had to, that you actually can do it on your own terms, in your own way, in a way that really highlights your talents. Because by the way, that's your mission anyway, right? If you created this business um, to help people in the way that only you can, the best thing you can do for your business is stay lined up to that. Hire people to help you do the stuff you don't need to do so that you can stay focused on your mission, so that you can spend your time where you need to spend your time. Because I believe that more of us need to be out there doing work that feeds us because that's what serves the world best. Um, that's what changes the world. That's, that's my big mission is do what you love. And I help you do that. And that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I have this community. That's why I serve my clients the way that I do. And what is it for your business where you get <clears throat> your voice like mine, right? When you're speaking about your work and your business and your mission and your vision and your business, what do you really want to do? How do you really want to change the world? Just go do it. Keep it simple. Do it your way. Invest to get support. Learn to make good decisions along the way because the more you learn how to make better decisions, the better you can serve your mission. Okay, I'm going to check for comments and then I'm going to run. You guys, I am loving this conversation. I could keep talking all day, but I'm not going to. Um, Michelle says, I'm beginning to realize I've allowed people to tell me what I should do. I rethink, I do rethink strategy to create a membership group like this. I had a paid membership group and it took too much of my time and I stopped it. Yeah. I'd love to know how you started a membership group with just a few people. Um, helpful about not having everything done. Hi, Sarah. Oh my gosh, Sarah. <gasps> Happy to see you, my dear. You're the best. Um, okay, so more on this. Uh, Michelle, you said you'd love to know how I started a membership group with just a few people. Um, do you mean this Facebook group or do you mean like a paid membership group. Let me know. Come back here. Drop me a comment and I'll come back to it. Um, I am taking requests for topics here on these Wednesday lives. So Michelle, I feel like you're heading into that. Um, so let me know more about what you want to know and I'll come back in here with another live and share it. Thank you for being part of this community for the last three years. Thank you for those of you who've been around for all four um, to see this business grow and evolve. It is the joy of my life. I love this work. I'm so grateful that I've gotten to do it. I'm going to cry for four years. Um, I just love my work. And if you don't love your work, or if you don't love a part of your work, I'm here to tell you that you can, you can find a better way. It's not easy. Entrepreneurship is fucking hard, but it is so rewarding. And I think we all have something that we're meant to do and we all need to get our mission out into the world. And if something is stopping you from getting out to your people, to your clients, then please let me know how I can help you, whether it's one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether it's I can offer a, um, a new topic here in these lives to support you, whatever it is I can do for you. I also have a huge network of other entrepreneurs if I'm not the right person to help you. So please let me know what I can do to support you and your mission. I will see you next week on next Wednesday for our next live. And I hope everyone has a great week. Thank you so much. Mwah. Bye.